Today's lesson will be about the incoming email processing capabilities. You can find it under admin and then under application, wide shared features, and there's the incoming email processing. There wasn't really another lesson where we explained uh, the kind of the technical setup, choosing a sort email address, and then figuring out what kind of address uh, Autodesk generates back that you need to forward to and how to set it up in Office 365. Today we'll kind of continue with a uh, basically a new setup so I can go through all the settings and uh, choose what we're going to do. Uh, let's let's just call it over here as the name. We just call it help desk because that's usually the box where the majority of your uh, of your client facing emails will come in. We call it help desk and in this case also a help desk head. Maybe we can put this one with, uh, with the capital uh, letters. That's a little bit nicer. That's the first section. That was already kind of explained in the other lesson. Now I'm going to explain you more into detail how the configuration works. And there's a lot of detailed configuration. The first one is for attachments. Nowadays, a lot of people send in a screenshot uh, or even a video or a picture. And that's great. Now you can create those attachments for images in the email body. So not only for the attachments, but the ones that are really embedded into the email. Now there's a uh, minimum width and a minimum height because what's also embedded in those emails is usually a picture for either way their profile or maybe the Facebook and the Twitter logos and those ones you don't want to have them in there. We found out that if you do like a, a 20 by let's say also 200 by, by let's say 75 that's usually kind of a, a good size that you want to kind of exclude and uh, that way you don't have all those pictures in there. Sometimes you need to a little bit fill with it. Maybe you have a couple of clients that have bigger pictures in there and that you might exclude them. But if you take it too, uh, too high, then of course the, the real pictures, the, the real problem that the client is sending to you won't come in. I would also suggest to, uh, to uh, attach the original email, check this box too. Uh, sometimes the email processing, it doesn't come in in the actual formatting, although it, it does, it's, it's way better than it used to be. Sometimes, when you can view the original email, how the client sent it on the exact spot where the pictures were, uh, that's even handier. So always uh, enable this check mark. The incoming email header, also this one, you want to have it always checked on uh, because then you also have the information of the from, the to, and the CC information. A lot of times uh, a client uh, emails it to you, copies maybe their boss or something, uh, somebody within their company. So when you respond back to the, to the client with a uh, follow-up, you want to make sure that you also include those ones. Like I said, sometimes it's maybe their boss and then you need to let them know that that issue has been resolved or you're trying to reach them. So having that information available here, that's the best option to go. So make sure that those checkboxes are checked. That's your general setting. Now we'll go to the first tab, ticket. By default, it's not enabled. Meaning right now this processor would just process the email, forward it, but doesn't do anything because we haven't enabled anything. So what you of course want to do is that you want to create a ticket. So you press on enabled and right away, of course, it says that it needs to have all those uh, settings available. Well, here you can uh, set up a whole bunch of, of default statuses and you can probably do a couple of different support boxes with, with different rules. But the game is that uh, you can't have different rules for the same support box. So keep that in mind. So a new email comes in or an email comes in, it becomes a ticket. Uh, do you want to have it right away to new or maybe you can already put it at a different status? Uh, I think the best way is to put it in uh, status new so you can right away pick it up as new. The default priority, uh, you can put everything to critical, but if there's a contract and the SLA starts kicking in, you might get a lot of alerts. Our suggestion is to start off with medium. Once you basically you are doing the triage, you check on what kind of tickets it is. You can always change it to a different, uh, different priority and then the SLA would calculate back uh, based on the setting that we set up in the SLA. The queue, it's depending also where you have those, you want to have those tickets come in. You might say I'll have them in coming in level one support. I'll kind of triage everything over there. So we'll put it into that queue and the source. In this case, that's for sure. It's going to be your email. You can see there's all a whole, whole bunch of uh, statuses already in their queues and priorities. Don't worry too much if you don't have it. Go to another lesson where we specifically explain on the details of those queues and priorities and, and statuses. Then there's a due date offset in days. That depends on, on uh, where do you want to set the due date. If it comes in today, you want to have the due date already to today or to tomorrow. Uh, we usually say a, a two-day offset. If you have an SLA also set in with, with due dates, 
that will kind of will overrule this one. So by default, I would say uh, two days. And the due time, you can also uh, have two options here. You can say use the default time from the ticket category or offset from the create time by so many hours and so many minutes. We usually leave it at the default time uh, from the ticket category. What you also can define here is an issue type. Usually this is would be a, let's say, let's call it a standard change. Uh, sometimes you also have it like break fix, like all the emails that come in, it's usually a break fix. Something got broken, needs to be changed. Uh, that's what we say it's a standard change or maybe, maybe just, just a service. So you could put a one in here and then also you can even define your, uh, your general uh, or your sub issue type, depending on, of course, the issue type that you have set up. Uh, let's call it a non-standard change. Then you have different, uh, different kind of issues over here. So you have to figure out what issue type is going to be here. What is the majority of your issues that come into regular email? Let's say we call it a standard change, and most likely it's no, not also there. We probably have not set it up into detail, but let's say it's a user desktop issue, and here we can say it's uh, let's say it's an issue with with uh, with an application. I think that's the most default one. Work type again. Uh, if you have all the types already set up, you can put it in here. Uh, let's also Again, put it as end user. Uh, we think in the majority of the cases, that's what is by default that's coming in. And the ticket category, uh, that's also basically, we can put it as standard. That would be a career. Again, it's a different lesson. We'll explain you more on those ticket categories on, on what you can do. By default, there's a standard audit as one that you can choose over here. Uh, before we go a little bit down, I want to also uh, mention a, a topic here on top. The ticket company. So when uh, the email address of the person who's emailing to you is not yet set up in your system, might be happening, it's either way a new user or it's a new company, then by default it redirects all those tickets to a uh, this one a different, different. What you can do to make sure that those ones don't fall on your own company, because that's the default process, or on a other company that might later be used for regular stuff, you can create like a dummy company inside your, your auditor setup, let's call it unknown company, or company for unassigned uh, email processing tickets, like, like a name of a company that's just a dummy company that you just use for this, and you enable it there. Then later on, you can place a widget, and you can always see like, hey, tickets that came onto that company, I need to uh, update that, I need to put that email address, that contact into Autodesk from the right company, and then change it over. So by creating here a, a kind of a dummy company and then assign it to this one, uh, that gives you more visibility in the tickets that, are, uh, that were unable to assign by this particular processing unit. There's more additional contacts. Yes, for sure. You want to have the enable additional contact handling. Uh, that means that if multiple people have been uh, copied on the email, they will be added with the setting in general. And then also uh, will be added in the, in the updates when you apply them into the ticket notification. Tags, it's a different lesson. We'll be explaining a little bit more about tags, but you can organize them already by tags. Failure notification, uh, you would always say, okay, let's do a failure notification. Uh, there's a couple of uh, default settings already in here. So there's an incoming email processing uh, service desk failure. You can use the default one and we'll just usually put it one to the administrator. So you know that something went wrong. And there's more options where you can say, okay, the key resources or the owners, so lots of flexibility there as well. Success notification. Uh, I would not do that one, but we've seen it's, uh, it's usually it's a very solid processor. Uh, you will see all the emails, what you can do. You can even set up a rule that all the emails that have been forwarded uh, to the to the uh, to audit test, to the incoming email processor, you put them in a separate box, so you always have visibility on which emails were processed and uh, which ones were not. And that's all the settings. Now you can go to ticket note. So besides having a ticket being created, you can also add a note. Why is that handy? Well, first of all, we have to enable it before it makes sure that it, it uh, comes in. Why is this handy when you when your engineer or your technician uh, sends a note to the client, client can come, call a uh, reply back, and that reply goes back to you saying help desk ticket. Now, in this case, it's not being seen as a new ticket because it has in the in the subject, if properly configured, it's again, it's a different lesson, where you have the, the ticket number, you can see that it's an existing ticket. And when this option is enabled, it knows like, okay, well, this reply from the client needs to go into this particular ticket. What you can do then in this case, you can say, you know what, Let's make sure that I filter those ones out. So you put them back at customer node added. That way you can make a widget or you can change and check on that status. And you know, hey, client replied back, there's a note. Could also be a vendor 
or even internally you can reply back to, uh, to tickets without going actually into the ticket. You can use the, the, the email uh, copied as long as that support email, that help desk email is copied on it. Again, you would enable the, the initial contact handling. We choose again the same uh, processing for the failures. And we leave open the success. And there's on the bottom also a reopen prevention. What we have seen, you close the ticket, a client sees that email, the ticket completion maybe five days later. Either he wants to reply back to it saying, hey, thank you very much, or hey, I have a new issue. Uh, and then that, that all tickets being opened again. So here you can enable the reopen prevention. What is your grace period? How many days do you say, okay, ticket is closed, they can't really open it. Let's say two days. After two days, there was a simple issue. It should be gone. If it happens again, it would be a new issue. Again, it depends on, on how you want to have it done. You can, a success, you can send a success notification to your resources if you want to have the one. But usually, like I said, the successes are okay. You only usually want to have a uh, notification when something goes wrong. Make sure when you're done, by the way, press save and close. Take a time entry. Again, it's a big feature. You can have via codes, you can even have some time entries being done. In this case, again, if you want to use it, you have to press the enabled. And you can change it to status. Let's say it's in progress because you're doing a time entry. You can even set a work type, call it user, end user. Additional contacts, because it's internal, you do a work entry, you don't really have to uh, follow through on that one. Again, we put the service desk failure goes to your administrator. Success failure, we leave it open. And that's, that's the setting for this one. So lots, lots of possibilities. Now here in the top, this is where you're kind of like a coding. So follow these rules. And that's when you want to do a time entry. When, you, for example, your mobile app is not going to work. Uh, you're in a kind of in a quick hurry. You have no, uh, no time to quickly open up uh, Autodesk. Or even if you're at the client side where you don't want to open up Autodesk on, on that particular environment, you can just quickly reply uh, to the email from the, from the ticket notification. And by putting in these time entry indicators, it will be processed as a ticket note. And then you can also uh, change the status using the S for um, uh, what the different status is. Now, the same settings that I just did for ticket, ticket note, and ticket time entry, you can also use it for the project. If you use the project module, then again, this one comes in very handy. It's a similar setup as a ticket. If you want to use it, of course, you have to press the button enabled. And then you can add, okay, what kind of settings do you have over here? Same would be for the task notes. If you want to use it, you need to enable it, set up the failure notification. And that's over here. And the same thing too for the task time entry. You can also enable that one and change the statuses over here. Very, very powerful feature that Autodesk has. I would say if you uh, set it up correctly, it gives you a lot of help. You don't have to weed through the email box anymore to picking up all those uh, emails that, uh, that need to be a ticket. But also when you send notifications from the support email address and they're properly configured, clients or your resources, your technicians can respond and it's all being added to the ticket. No manual copy and pasting anymore. Once you're done, press save and close and you're off on the races. If you have any questions, let us know through our Facebook group.